From the Charles E. Smith Center in Washington, D.C., this is the Atlantic 10 on ESPN+. Plus. Today, the St. Joe's Hawks make the short trip down to Washington, D.C. to take on the George Washington Colonials. And happy Saturday to everybody. I'm Jeff Farnell, joined alongside by Tyler Byram. When you look at these two teams, both have brand new head coaches, and each coach prefers to shoot the three balls, so we could possibly be seeing a high-scoring affair this afternoon. Happy Saturday to everybody. I'm Jeff Farnell, joined alongside side by Dante Verme. If you look at the last couple of years, St. Bonaventure has been an offensive-oriented team, but this year they have done all their work with defense. Another tough opponent for the Colonials. They face a UMass team that is one of the top offenses in the conference, and then they are also one of the most disruptive defenses. Rutcher lets the shot clock get inside of 10. Healthy three. Davis, this man just can't miss. Pipkins. The leading scorer for the Minutemen coming back after missing time with a hamstring injury but hasn't really made an impact on this game and he turns it over. Maceo Jack for the two-handed slam. 57 apiece inside 30 seconds. Colonials have three timeouts. Neither team a foul to give. Hyduke gets into the lane and scores. 19.8 seconds left. Torrey Hyduke puts the Colonials back. Up two. When he's on, he's getting deep in the post, and he's a grizzly bear. DJ Williams. Littles accepts the pass and one. Missoula into the corner. Macy Ojek, that's a big three ball. GW goes back on top. 13 points, leads everybody. Post touch for Mond, going in against Gatling. Stevenson, how about that? What a job by Ariel Stevenson. Over the shoulder. She maybe couldn't do that again. Hawks with five on the shot clock. On the drive inside, Douglas not able to put it home. And here comes GW. Battle. Knocks down the three ball. And that's a good start for Jamison Battle, who was just one of ten from three-point territory midweek. And one thing for Battle, that is now his 20th straight game with a made three-pointer. He has made one all every single game this season. Should be a favorite for all-conference freshman team as Long Prey misses on his triple attempt. So far, the Hawks have come out. They've missed their first three shots, while the Colonials have made two out of their first three attempts. Potter circles. Nelson on the drive, pulls up. And that a little wide right as Longprey comes up with a rebound. And of course, Jameer Nelson, Jr., his dad, played for St. Joe's before he went on to have a terrific NBA career where he was an all-star. Yeah, this is a big matchup for the Nelson family here today. Potter cut off by Longprey. Jack on the drive, a little short on the teardrop, and Longprey collects. And you're seeing George Washington, they're really trying to attack the basket right now. Uh, St. Joseph doesn't really have a huge post threat, so they're going to be able to find different ways to get involved. Parr blocks the shot out of bounds. It'll stay with St. Joe's. Yeah, just a great job by Parr, staying with long prey, not giving up on the play. And really, if you're long prey, you got to put that one up. You can't just try and lay it up in the basket. You have to go up maybe off the glass, especially with a guy like Parr that's 6'9", and you really didn't get past him. Now, even though long prey is, is big, a lot of his work is done on the perimeter. Good chunk of his shots from three. Puts it on the ground and is able to sneak through for two. He's a quick learner. At times, simple little ball fake got one, uh, not one, but two GW defenders to go up and gets an easy layup. He's a Canadian. He's from Quebec, moved to the United States a little more than five years ago. Parr in a crowd, able to use glass for two more. They have a great start for Parr again. Forwards are going to be able to have a big game against the St. Joseph's defense. One of the worst defenses in the country, ranked 342 out of 350. And yeah, they give up 81 points a game. On Prey with a give up to Miles Douglas, two in red. Now here's Brown into a crowd. Shot clock gets deep again on the Hawks. Douglas travels. Douglas. 
done a great job on that drive. Just dragged that foot a little bit too much. Jamie Christian, first season as the head coach of the Colonials after he took Siena from a team that was picked very low in the MAC a year ago. They finished at the very top of the conference standings, almost won the conference, and then had a great tenure at Mount St. Mary's. His alma mater is Armel Potter sneaks through. The Colonials off to a good shooting start. Back to Christian, him and Lange, the two Atlantic 10 rookie head coaches matching up here this afternoon. Really the future of this conference between two programs that have historically been near the top of the league. I'll tag the foul against Parr as Ryan Daly came in. Daly can do a little bit of everything for the Hawks. Top 10 of the conference in scoring, rebounding, and assists. Nationally, he's 28th in scoring, posting 19 a game. Yeah, he's one of the stars in the league, and if St. Joe's had a little bit more wins under their belt, he would have definitely been first team, second team consideration. I just think with the prolific offense that he's been able to provide for this team this year, he's going to be in consideration nevertheless. George Washington with a 9-3 lead. They've made four of their first seven shots. Potter tight ropes the baseline. Nelson draws contact and the foul.